Greetings and welcome, brave citizens of our new world. I'm Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Dr. Terawatt. This is our layer 3.0. And today is day 14 of our beta challenge, VEDA, <laughs> vlogging every day in April. I am joined <laughs> by Cassie D. 20 Love Choo. Hey, everybody. Sup? And this is Steve. Uh, is it Steve? It's his last day in Canada. Maybe. Where Maybe. Is, well, <coughs> it depending is, on how this stupid weather goes. Yeah, there's an outside. ice storm outside, so we're not like sure how, if his like flight's canceled. We, all, we like all like there's a window. There's a curtain. There's a, window there's a right curtain there. there, right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got nine questions. I'm going to do today because I don't want to keep us uh, here for too too long. So here we go. For Steve, have you ever had the chance to work a match with a current WWE superstar in the past? If so, how was it? If not, who would you like to work with? I have not had the chance to work with a current WWE superstar with the past, but I have managed to work with one who used to be a WWE superstar. Mm, that's I, pretty sweet. Yes, um, it was my first appearance on a live show, and for the because he was touring England, uh, Chris Masters, he goes under Chris Adonis in, when he used to work for TNA and stuff. Uh, big fella, 6'6", six, six, jacked as hell, scary looking dude. Um, <laughs> he was touring uh, around England and we managed to get him on our show for the thing. And it was like, oh sweet, I remember me and my brother used to watch him, because his whole gimmick is that he just did a full Nelson, that was his finish. But it was called the Master Lock. And there would always be a thing, like, it's like, you'd come out giving it the biggins, like, ah, oh, no one can break my master lock, and people would step up and try and do the challenge. He'd put them in it, it's like, try and break out. Try and break out, no one does it. One guy did it, Bobby Lashley. Um, and, yeah, everyone went nuts. And so, I was getting prepared to go out, and because I normally help film and work the soundboard and stuff, and make sure the music's working. And then, before I head out, I'm grabbing my stuff, and my bag, with snacks and stuff, and then I get a Facebook message from Coach, like, hey, do you have your training gear? And I'm like... Oh dang! Why? <laughs> it's like Chris wants to do the master lock challenge, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh my!" Oh, and hey, so hey. I get back oh, there, no. and me and another guy, uh, Luke, uh, we're the two designated guys to go do the master lock challenge. He's a bit bigger than me, so he goes up first. Crowd's like, "Hey, this guy's gonna die." Um, he comes out, he gets the thing, passes out, thrown on the floor. And then I go out there, and it's my first time, I'm pissing myself, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Going up there, shake his hand, he actually talks crap at me. He's like, I know your age, don't know, don't know what you've shaken that with. And I was like, alright, whoa, alright, I get it, fine, <laughs> asshole, be like that. Um, and then it's like, do the, we're doing the mass dot challenge, and I am a slight lad. So, you are you are indeed a slight lad. It's live, I believe is the word. And so I'm <laughs> sat down in the chair, he puts it on and immediately yanks me out of the chair and just starts carrying me around in a full Nelson around the ring. Wow, what a jerk. And I'm just ragdolling everywhere. And I am crucified on a six six man's chest and it wasn't ple unpleasant. Um <laughs> <laughs> And then not I'm altogether not unpleasant. Not altogether unpleasant. And I pass out and just go, woof, throws me down. The other guy has woken up from his, like, pass out and he just carries me out the back, like, proper, like, Jesus, like, in the arms of Jesus. <laughs> Ave Maria. Yeah. The just, whole, the whole yeah, thing. All the way into the back. Wow. And then later I go back to working the sound deck and I'm, like, proper, like, ow. And people are coming up when they go get merch and, like, dude, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> And my first, that was my first, I will keep that to my grave. No matter where I go now, I remember that my first time on stage was getting bodied by Chris <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hey Doc, I'm a long time viewer of your work and this is my first time posting a question. I'm originally from Minnesota, aka Little Canada, but I'm now living in Ibaraki, Ibaraki. Prefecture, Japan as an assistant English teacher. My question is how you will deal with countries and their traditional culture in your new world. Many traditional arts such as calligraphy, tea ceremonies, pottery, etc. are slowly dying in Japan for various reasons. In your new world, will you implement programs or other things to preserve traditional and unique aspects of the world's cultures, or do you have other plans? Also, I wish you luck with your health, and I hope things improve. I don't know how to say that. It's a ga ganbare. 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 It just basically <laughs> means good luck. Good luck. Nice. Okay, fight, sweet. Fight on. Yeah, fight on. Like, yeah. You can do it. <laughs> Never give up. As it stands, 
the, the rule that I have for when I rule the world is if your culture isn't like racist or sexist or damaging of other people's health or safety or, or just general peace, like tea ceremonies or pottery or calligraphy, just like things like that, I've got absolutely no qualms with that. And I would absolutely love to preserve those parts of those cultures because I find them so fascinating. I'm always a big proprietor of the fact that life demands variety that we need lots of different thinking people and different ways of doing certain things in order to evolve as a species. So I don't want to get rid of any of that stuff. However, there are certain parts of culture that are deeply racist and deeply sexist, and I have absolutely no problems just grinding those parts of culture clean out. Doctor, do you like cigars? Do you like whiskey? Do you like cigars with whiskey? Oh, I haven't had a, a good cigar and a glass of whiskey in a long time. Um, I miss it, I'm not gonna lie. So, the, I do, I just, it's been a super long time since I've managed. I will again someday, I hope, fingers crossed, but oh. it's, it's not something you can do on a regular basis, because it, it, uh, does things to you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Probably not so good for you. No, it's bad for the health, and my health <laughs> is bad enough as it is already. Why my chair so Paul? What's going on here? Nope, it's supported on your two chairs. Cool. All right, so I'm stuck this high up. Right. It's good because it's like you're the tallest one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. it 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 um it, accentuates it, it, the it, idea that I I am small friend. You're small. I'm you're small. small. M small friend. M small. It's funny oh. because in actuality, it's, yeah. I'm the one who's actually like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. All right. No, get up here. <laughs> Hey Doc, what are your thoughts on the recent news development around Justin Carmichael, aka Juario? Okay, so about, I'm gonna say, a week to two weeks ago when a lot of this hashtag change the channel stuff started going down, I ha- because I'm friends with a couple of people that are, are on Channel Awesome, and a few of them contacted me knowing that I had made a video with him previously and said, okay, so right now there's nothing confirmed there's a lot of hearsay there's a lot of discussion and rumor about some things that happened with justin and they said you know i don't want to speak ill of the dead but here's some things that are coming to light you probably want to take down your video and i said okay i've got plans to remove all that content anyways but i'm gonna just i'm gonna hang on to it until some more stuff comes out because I don't want somebody going like, oh, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and throw some rumors on the fire here and just immediately jump on that because I had relatively good interactions with Justin. I still don't have any further information because of I'm just kind of keeping an arm's length between me and everything that's going on with, with Channel Awesome. That being said, due to the fact that more things have come out regarding Justin, I have decided to remove all of the Channel Awesome related content that we had on our previous channel, like our old uh, Evil Incorporated channel back that we had before the name change. I've decided to remove all of that from the channel, so it's no longer there, and that's just where I'm at right now. I, again, I don't have any details, I don't really know what's going on, so I'm just kind of keeping it over there, and, and yeah, that's where that is. Thought I was going to enjoy some ASMR until you started chewing. <laughs> Why? Uh, Monster. Uh, yeah, I know. Some just I'm bad like people. I watch the world burn. <laughs> okay, question. If you had to have one type of meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? And it has to be the exact same ingredients every time. Uh, I know what mine would be. Bur burgers. Mine would be dumplings. Dumplings. Mine would be. Um, mine would be probably pork and Chinese cabbage dumplings. That sounds that actually sounds That's, nice. Those are that is like my ultimate my like my ultimate comfort food. Nice. It's, I, it's I protein. Could, it's carbohydrates. It's vitamins. It's got lettuce inside. Yeah. It. You could live off that feasibly. Mm hmm. One could imagine. I mean, you wouldn't live healthily. No. But yeah. Yep. Uh, burgers for myself. I think burgers. Burgers or pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be the same burger. This is Each a, time, the this same a, pizza. This is such a North American thing for you to say. Well, because they have, it's a, it's a large combination food, right? Like it's got mm -hmm. like your vegetables and your meats and sauces and have stuff inside the bun. And I'm just like, yeah, I could eat burgers. I mean, if it's a category, that means I could change up what was in the burger, right? Same ingredient. Um, same ingredients, yeah. So if I could eat just one singular thing for the rest of my life, it would still be some kind of burger, maybe an Apache burger or something. Ooh. I'd die young. 
But as a wise man once said, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Uh, I would have my mum's homemade uh, Italian chicken soup. Mm. Damn, son! It's really nice. It's that like good. reduced white wine sauce with chicken. Uh, what's it? What's it? Uh, pancetta ham, mm. uh, carrots, onion, garlic, and you either cook and you cook it in, in a rice bowl. So it's basically a really nice uh, chicken risotto, and it's. I can have that. I can have that all day. It's so good. <laughs> that sounds nice. awesome. I've never been more proud to call myself a minion and a brave citizen. My question for you, Doc, is with your newer, healthier world, would we still have snacks like chips or Kit Kats? Yeah. I mean, we would go back and look over all of the ingredients and the process in which they are being made to ensure that they aren't doing anything a little under the table, which I assure you a lot of snacks and whatnot are being done in such a way, we would go through and make sure that everything meets the new standard for health for food going forward. Because I don't want to get rid of snack food, but I also don't want people drinking what is effectively antifreeze in some of their food in the States. What new inventions are you currently working on slash cooking up, and are you interested in seeing the Venom movie, Spider-Man movie, later this year? Also, need you are a trooper, not for laughing. Currently working on the suit, actually. I've got some stuff that I'm planning on showing later on this week. Uh, as well as getting back into doing Fan Art Fridays. I apologize for the brief hiatus on that. I scheduled things like several months in advance from like before January up until just recently. We had like all of them scheduled. And then I just didn't have anything after that planned. I have more to send out, but I just haven't been putting it up. So we're going to be getting on that. But I'm working on the suit. I've got some really exciting stuff I want to show you guys from the 3D artist that I've been working with who's in the UK. Super cool dude. Not and me. Yeah, not Steve. <laughs> not me. I am inept. <laughs> I am inept at that crap. And as for the um, as for the Venom movie though, I am I'm interested because they basically decided to take the story of one of the supervillains from Spider-Man and tell their story without Spider-Man at all. And it's not even like oh, he's not here yet. It's like, no, this is a universe where Spider-Man doesn't exist. Well, yeah, Venom's an interesting character by himself, especially because they're going with Eddie Brock, who's actually, the, who is the best Venom, and Tom, I think Tom Hardy is going to do a very good job at being Eddie. I'm curious. I'm curious, because a lot of the trailer that I saw was super sparse. That's, that's what they're going with. I think it's going to be a lot more of like a less like, ah, it's Venom, he's big brute Venom, it's going to be a lot more very menacing symbiote Venom, yeah, I feel. That's why they haven't shown off literally yeah. any... They showed off like one cylinder that has the symbiote fluid inside it, and that's all that we're going to see for a while, I think. And yeah. I like that. Build up that suspense. And that's the thing, is I feel like it's going to be a suspense horror sci-fi flick now, more than like a superhero... Like Aliens. Thing. Yeah, a lot like Aliens, so like that's, that's the feel that I'm getting from the trailer. Uh, what about yourself? I actually have not seen anything on the new Venom movie. Like, I haven't seen trailers. Um, there's only been one. Yeah, there's just the one that's been yeah. like a 30 No, like, I haven't, I haven't seen anything. Yeah, it was super um, under the radar. Yep. For, for me, like, I'm not super huge into um, superhero things. Like, I've never really been into the comics. Um, and, like, I've watched a whole bunch of the Marvel superhero, like, cinematic universe stuff because mm -hmm. like it's fun and it's a little more lighthearted and and um I don't know I feel like anything surrounding what I know of Venom is going to be a lot more kind of like dark and depressing and doesn't really appeal to me yeah. that's <laughs> fair it's especially because it's like it's a spider it's it's a spider-man property but going from something as bright as spider-man homecoming to and something homecoming like, I loved it was awesome yeah it was yeah. bright yeah. funny all that stuff and then going straight to wait Venom. Now, gritty, gritty as hell Venom. Yeah. Here's the kicker for me. Why don't we just make a movie about Venom and we'll present it as a, as a, like a psychological thriller, uh, or rather a sci-fi thriller, and, and see how people like that. And that's been in the works for a while. It has, and I like Tom Hardy, which is what's got my interest. What I'd prefer is if Marvel Studios was doing it and it was a part of the MCU. We've been talking about this. Yeah, we've been talking about this. We've been talking about this way too I go, long. I like superhero Comic stuff. Comic books, I I'm like. sure you can tell. They got on our rant. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the movie. We'll see. We'll see. I'm reserved interest. Doctor, I believe that in the Terawatt time to come, one of the most important options future mad scientists and evil geniuses to be could possibly need is a centralized university where science... Science! Science! ...can be studied and improved. 
After all, you'll be too busy ruling the new world to study science! Bill, 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 Bill. With wild passion <laughs> and mad staring eyes, shall I begin the search for the next Will Magnus, Victor Von Doom, Thaddeus, uh, Sivana? Sivana. Thaddeus Sivana, Septimus Pr Praetorius. Nah, I think that's supposed to be like Praetor, like Praetorius. I think it's supposed to be an A in there, I think. Oh, yeah? <laughs> or or Do Dr. Wiley. Dr. Wiley. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I, what a, I what love a, Dr. Wiley. What a bookend. <laughs> This university shall need professors and educators, after all. I completely agree. If I'm going to be running the planet, I'm going to have less time to build and develop wacky scientific projects. And as much as wacky scientific projects are a labor of love for me, and are a passion of mine, making the world a better place is a greater passion. So my focus is going to be moving more onto world politics rather than science, and I am going to need people to pick up that torch. Your tagline, end of line, comes from Tron, a movie made in 1982. Why did you choose a tagline from a movie made three years before you were born? Good eye! I chose it because I've, for the longest time I couldn't think of what to say at the end of any of the videos that I was putting together. I was like, what do I say? What do I do? I don't know how to end this. And if, I'm, <laughs> if you like, go all the way why? back... Yeah. <laughs> if you go all the way back to my first videos that I started making, like the first episode of The Warfront on my old channel, I'm just like, I don't know how to end this, so I'll see you later. Bye. And then the next six le like videos after that, I'm still going, I still don't know how to end this. I guess, uh, and then I kept going and I kept going and I kept going until I eventually, I think I was re-watching the old Tron getting ready for the new Tron to come out. Because I really enjoyed both of those films and I thought they were great. A lot of people were like, oh, it's just a visual effects cash grab. I'm like, so was the original Tron. They thought, <laughs> wouldn't it be fun if I did it like this and you'd make the lines glow on their suits with green screening? Also, wouldn't that be wild? Jeff Bridges, yay! Yeah, Jeff Bridges. <laughs> and CGI young Jeff Bridges yeah. is Clue. <laughs> it's, it's, he's one of my favorite actors of all time, Jeff Bridges. He's so cool. I'm just the, glorifl the glorious man where it's like, am I still to build the perfect system? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, when I was watching the old film, I came across that, and I noticed that the evil computer system, every time he was speaking with the, the user who was, like, at his big glass desk, which I want one of those someday, okay. every time he finished talking, it was end of line. And I thought, that was just so succinct and so specific, I really liked it. So, I figured, why not? I'll pick that up as a sort of call-out to being succinct and finishing what you're talking about, and as a homage to evil technology that <laughs> seeks to make the world uh, a more efficient place, at the very least. And that's all the time we've got for today, and so all the questions I'm answering, I was answering less questions because I thought it would save time, but boy, howdy, did we go on a rant. Yeah, I'm so, gonna blame that on an extra person being here. <laughs> that is actually what happens. If it's just me, it's like, I can get through 20 questions yep. super fast, two but people, it's a bit the more. more people I add, the longer the video gets. <laughs> yep. Well, like, the, the, what was it, day three, when I first showed up, we had everyone here, it was like, that was a 20-minute video. Yeah, it was like, yep. over 20 minutes, and we answered, like, five questions or something. <laughs> Some ridiculousness. So anyways, thank you, everybody, for sending in your questions. I'm, I'm loving answering all of these, and I'm sorry if I don't get to all of them. If your question didn't get answered and you really want to get that through, please feel free to post it again in the thing down below, and I will try to get to it. Uh, if you have anything else that you'd like to ask, please feel free to leave it in the comment down below. Actually, hang on to it, because tomorrow might be the day that I'm taking old Steve-O here, back to the airport, and that's likely going to be our Vita for tomorrow, is going to the airport scaring security and putting uh, Salty Boy here back on a plane. <laughs> I'm like a really dramatic because yeah. I'm going through security like the... So tomorrow's likely going to be about that, depends and I'm not going to be answering a huge amount of questions. It depends on the weather, because it's scary outside. Yeah, so there, we may not be doing that, but... If, actually, you know what I'm going to say, don't leave questions, just leave comments for now, because I'm not going to answer any questions underneath this video. Save it for, for the next video, because uh, I'm either taking Steve to the airport, or, if that doesn't happen, we are going to be asking you guys some questions instead. We're going to mix Whoa! it up! You're in the hot seat! What a surprise Script twist! Flip. Twist! Wow! We're going to put you in the hot seat. We're going to number those questions so that you can number your answers. What a and twist. You're the Doc Tarawat now. Y You're evil. You. I'm like, no. no it's like, wait, no, what do you, what do you know? You can't. No. You can't no. <laughs>
Don't just, give them my power. <laughs> it's not true. So you cut that. Cut that out. Just, cut it. Cut, cut it. it. <laughs> we'll talk about this in the van. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, my brave citizens, I'm Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Dr. Terawatt. This is our layer 3.0. This is Steve. Thank you, good night. Much this fun. is Cassie. Bye, everybody. <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow on our next episode of Vita. End of line.